Hello everyone and welcome back to my JNSQ series in Kerbal Space Program 1.7.3. In this episode we have two rescue contracts to start off with, one for Bilson and one for BTOP. And I decided that maybe we should try and use this Gemini capsule, it's called Vinci uh, Leo M63E Vinci Command Pod. And of course send it up uncrewed and then bring both of the Kerbals back down. Now one is in a really awkward orbit so maybe not. But I wanted to try this out anyway. You can see what I'm hiding there. Uh, that's in a genus stage. Uh, somewhat highly developed with uh, these RCS thrusters and these uh, solar panels and also antennae. And bonus mod propellant. Uh, but a Decker engine. Now I know that the engine I ought to be using is one of these or one of these because it's the Bell state is this the Bell liquid fuel tank and these are supposed to be the Agena engine but they have a critical problem you see they only have one or two ignitions whereas the Agena engine is supposed to have many many ignitions well eventually initially it has one or two ignitions eventually it has 15 of course they used the Agena relights to great effect during the Gemini missions so we couldn't really use that for what I wanted to do, and so the Decker engine. Uh, so, yep, that is the best choice. Now, people have told me that uh, I can upgrade the engines uh, from BDB, and so if we take a look here, this is the Alpha Star engine that was in question, and indeed over here it says two engine configs, Alpha Star liquid engine, Alpha Star liquid engine, there's two versions, basically the AJ-10-104 and AJ-10-118, but I don't know how to tell it to switch. Um, is there a key? Um, there's the, I see engine config there. It says which engine config it is. Now I don't know how to change that. So yeah, right click, left click, um, double click. <laughs> I mean, uh, so yeah. Uh, if you guys could tell me that, that'd be great. Uh, I think I need a cap on this, but I don't really want to have a cap on this because it's just extra weight that doesn't do anything. But this is the docking probe for the Agena, and we're gonna try docking. So that's part of the goals here. And um, we'll test out this capsule, and probably we'll just send it to uh, low kerbin orbit, get the Kerbal from there back down, and uh, proceed from there. This is a launcher with four. Merlin 1Bs, a double decker stage here. I've done the fancy thing of tilting them, uh, pointing them through the center of mass so that if one goes out, it'd still work, in theory. Uh, I've done that with centaurs before, but not this. And, um, yeah. I'm just wondering if I need a cap there, because I see that there's a node on top there. Let's see, Leo. I mean, I don't like open nodes at the top, obviously, nobody does. Automated resupply pod. I don't want to unlock too many things, though. This is already going to be a little bit expensive. Aerodynamic nose cone. 960 to unlock that? Oh, I don't want the open node. All these Gemini things. Okay. Hopefully that didn't cost too much. It's still... It's pretty expensive. It's like 300 some 320 for that stupid little thing. So I've called it Gemina because it's a Gemini plus an Agena. And it's really tall, as you can see, so that's maybe a problem. It doesn't have a whole lot of supplies in there, just two days worth. And habitat is good, but that's only because there's one Kerbal. Well, actually just two Kerbals in it, so it says habitat is good, so maybe habitat is good. Anyway. We don't want any Kerbals in. I'll make sure to action group the antennae. We should probably put some solar panels on here too. Larger solar panels down here might be better than just having those little ones. I'll put the little ones up here. Even though they're going to be blasted by the thruster, potentially. Uh, this is going to deorbit itself using the RCS, hopefully. Okay, maybe that'll be better. Later on we can attach some supplies onto the Agena stage if necessary. Uh, we'll go with this for now. Okay, yeah, I mean the other Kerbal was out here, B-top. 
the missing mod propellant is on this uh, mounting plate that I used. I took the mod propellant out of that. Okay, so throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition, and launch. A tall rocket without fins like this would be bad in stock stock. Somehow it's working here. Okay, looking good so far. The nose is red. Which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, I don't know. And separation and ignition. Both engines are good. But I didn't set them to high quality this time. Oh, oh yeah, I didn't, so... Now, in this case, the Gemini is actually going to be the passive target for the docking, and the Gina will do the docking. A little bit of a reversal here, but... I didn't want to put as much RCS on the pod, and in this case we're not using a separate service module, so... Eventually the expectation is that we'll be able to carry more stuff on the Agena. Just slap it on, basically. Okay, well, that's sort of good enough. Let's see, our target is at 105 by 83... 84, basically. Which, uh, that's inside the atmosphere again, isn't it? Uh, yep, it's inside the atmosphere again. Well, at least that really high one is not inside the atmosphere. Oh, we lost communications. I forgot to extend the antennae before. Well, at least we got to orbit first. We'll wait. Are they sort of poking into the thing again? Oh, whatever. I'll be fine. Okay, uh, decouple node. Wow, that went flying off, didn't it? Okay, um, Gina, you've got comms and all, right? It's got the wisp antennae, these. Oh, well, they can extend despite the fairing. That's nice. Okay. Separation. Uh, which part? Okay, we got signal back. I'm going like, we are not supposed to lose signal. Oh, oh, I didn't want to bonk it. Oh, 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 oh. Is that? Okay. That'll work for now. Whether this side, not that. Okay, can you set that as target? We need to do this before we lose communication. Gun, you have a reaction wheel too. Do it, do it. Can we just separate off the fairing now? That's probably for the best. I want to use this fuel, that's why we're keeping it on. This is going to be a bit of a hassle though. Oh, we lost communication. Shoot. We're going in a little bit fast to lose communication. I should have just gone slowly. Then they could have drifted together and be fine. Uh, okay, well, it's safe enough, I guess. Could have been worse. Should be getting a signal though, oh, uh, I mean, where's, where's our satellites? Where are we? We're, we're over here. Uh, I guess we're not, we need more satellites. Okay, will the docking work? Docking works. Okay, RCS is already off. We still want to control from here, very important. And, yep, now we can continue with the rendezvous bit.
So Bilson's scrap. Oh, I guess we're not gonna gain much on him at this rate. Mm, okay, orbit prograde. In this case, we're not using the Agena to boost us up, it's the prior stage still. We're gonna try to meet up with it when it's not in the atmosphere, obviously. I had enough of that. Um, fine, signal lost. Also, we'll probably have signal over there, maybe, if we do it quickly enough. You know, I'm interested to see if I shut down one of these engines, whether it works or not. So I'm going to shut one down. And I, I'll have to shut down this bit too. Okay. So now we only have one engine. Let's see what happens. Seems balanced to me. Um, no, it seems like I should have gone the other way. Well, this is a good time to test out our full capabilities. I'm going to boost up to a very high orbit, meet up with it, and then slow down. Okay, here we go. Ignition. Full power. And we're not really using that much yaw. So, very well controlled with just one engine. Okay. Draw down. Separation. Separation. I want to make sure we have communication right now. Yeah, okay. This one is a high quality engine. Okay, well we've got 570 meters per second difference, so maybe we should look into that right now. Nice view. Uh, negative relative velocity, is that right? Okay, good. I want to take a look at the closest separation. Uh, uh, it's going up too much. I'm going to use the burn time if I can. Maybe I can manually turn. Not gonna help. That helps. Or it was. <laughs> oh no, we lost comms already. Ah, gosh darn it. Ah, bad plan. Well, now we're gonna deorbit ourselves pretty harshly. Almost a good test of the system. Next up, commsats. Well, we're gonna be coming down steeply. We can't see that right now. Here, oddly enough, I mean we can see it here, but we can't see it on this panel. Very shadowed. Well, let's see what survives and what doesn't. We haven't armed the parachutes or anything. And I think we're gonna have a lot of lack of comms. Wow, that just went. Oh. Thought they were supposed to write themselves. We got one RCS port. Okay, so it's doing it, sort of. But we've lost the parachutes. Pretty encouraging overall, though. In terms of our survivability here. Oh, until that point, of course. All right, compsats, and then we'll try the rescues. Okay, well, so I built my quadsat launch, four satellites on here. 
but it's a bit wobbly. It was a lot wobblier before I started recording too. So do I do I not have auto strutting? Uh, wait a minute. I thought I put the what advanced tweakables on. Maybe that's why I didn't have the engine selection thing. I could have sworn I had activated. Yeah, I did activate advanced tweakables. Oh, but we haven't unlocked struts yet. Hmm. Well, this is a very wobbly rocket. It's also inadvisable for many other reasons. Um, because I'm using SRBs and that's never a good thing for me. In fact, not only are we using these boosters for the first time, we're even using an upper stage SRB because it really doesn't matter what orbit I get this into as long as I get it into an orbit. But, um, well, okay. <laughs> it's a wobbly rocket, but we'll try it. We'll see. You can see it's a little bit off from vertical, too. Anyway, uh, ignition and launch. Oh, it's a very... Ver uh, oh, one, one engine malfunctioned? Which engine? Um, oh, one of the SRBs malfunctioned. <laughs> Honestly. I thought SRBs was supposed to be reliable, and here we have an SRB malfunctioning. Uh, this was just not destined for greatness. Um, <laughs> oh, it was wobbly on the pad, and now we have all this business. Oh. I mean, it looked good until we had the uh, wobbly problem. Okay, well, maybe we have control over it now. I don't know if that hurt our ability to get to orbit, though. Whoa, whoa. Okay, it's still wobbly. Um. Next, I even have a terrier stage. Uh, and that's not good. Uh, it's not got enough gimbal to hold this anymore. Well, this has been an interesting episode so far. Yeah. Okay. I tried to put the um, four satellites on top of this rocket, which is the run, one that we launched um, Gemini Agena on. And it's still wiggling. And I don't feel like... I mean, of course, it's not... I actually set the root part to this tank. Oh, I'm not capturing my cursor. Sorry. Uh, I forgot to change that setting. Sorry about that. Okay. So, um, yeah, I set the root parts of this tank, but unfortunately, mm, it still doesn't seem the most stable thing. So I'm a little bit worried about it, and I already lost a lot of money today. So I'm going to see if we can unlock struts first. Let's recover this. Well, we're tantalizingly close. We have 42.2, and we need 45. So... We need to find 2.8 science somewhere. Okay, so there's nothing obvious out there. And the irony of it is, I sort of made the stack so that it looked not wobbly. I mean, of course, these are actually uh, shrouds for... Oops. Oh, oh right, the rerouting. Let me set the route back up to here. But yeah, these are shrouds on ant engines. And I guess balancing on ant engines is not good enough. But, you know, the stack looks pretty solid otherwise, if you take the shroud into account. But no, not good enough. So, what I figure is, we're not going to put all our eggs in one basket. Instead, we're going to launch one first. And it's got an experiment, it's got this LTE exper- Oh, no, it doesn't have any experiment. I'm going to put an experiment on it. Um, this light experiment. Or maybe I should do the mite. Let's do a light first. I don't know if we've done the light before. Uh, and I know Kerbalism has a very nice menu system and everything, but I need to figure out how to light. 
Um, I don't know. I can't see that number. That number is all messed up. Flight value. Moon. I mean, it seems like we've done these, right? That means... It doesn't seem like we've done might, but that requires a lot more size. Minimum inclination 70, max 120. Well, if we gotta toss just one satellite up, maybe we can go to a higher inclination. Let's go polar with it then. Uh, this one didn't say anything about polar, okay. Alright, let's launch our first polar satellite and it'll be just one of these. Okay, so I was sort of adamant about trying out these SRBs and getting them to actually work for me, but I've noticed that now I have the engine config here. So here we do have engine configurations and they seem to be the sea level variant and the vacuum variant of what well, are the caster SRBs, right? I mean, uh, the ones that are on the Delta rockets. So, yeah, well, of course, we want sea level in this case, and then different nose shapes and stripe colors. Um, but again, uh, let's just verify that this does not have that. The Alpha Star doesn't. Now, is this a good idea? Probably not. Uh, we've got a Terrier engine down here again. I feel like I should probably have fins. Um, it's probably more expensive than it ought to be, or has any right to be. Eto control surfaces, well at least. Um, these are not that expensive. That's a simple fin. That's a control surface, but that's expensive. I think these are the cheapest control surfaces we've got. Okay, it's weird. I'm not too sure about it. And this might be just an episode of disasters for all I know, but... Hey, uh, every so often there will be explosions. Well, we're not exactly rotated the right way, but... Alright. Could probably get more electric charge, but the satellite does have lots of solar panels on it. So, let's say it's on is up, ignition, and launch, throttle down, okay, surface control, our heading is going to be zero, the fins don't seem to be able to roll us, that's worrisome, I think these fins are largely useless apparently. They don't feel like they're doing a whole lot. Okay, thrust tail off. And separation. Okay, we are still accelerating. Terrier trying its best. But it's gonna be a long haul. We probably want it to be pretty high up. But we can do that with the probe zone engine, the ant engine. We don't need to be super picky about the orbit, but if we're going to be polar, maybe we ought to be polar. So, might running. Only 1.8 science? Well, maybe we can boost it up to high carbon, uh, carbon orbit uh, in order to get more, maybe. Maybe. Okay, just shy of orbit, but that's fine. Separation and ignition. Well, that'll be good enough for now. Okay, well, let's get the science. It's got a whole bunch of mites. Oh, it's based on the surface biome, too. We'll see how that goes. It's got some auroras down there. No more electric charge? Oh, it was a time warp problem. Past a certain time warp, it gets finicky. More auroras. First polar satellite. There's too many of these biomes. Keeps adding more in. 
Well, this is probably gonna trickle in a lot of science eventually. We just need... Okay, we got 45. That's what I wanted from it. But it keeps losing communication and all sorts of things. Anyway, we'll leave it be. It seems to be getting plenty of science. I'll turn all these on for transmission. And they'll have to decide how to work that. But... Anyway, let's unlock some struts, uh, and I'll make sure that this isn't going to warn me every time it loses signal or battery. I'll just have to deal with that. We can set it to a high orbit eventually, but right now it's gathering so much science, so I'll just leave it be. Okay, at long last, we are researching struts, and probably uh, launch clamps finally too. We are trying this way. And of course I've got auto strutting and it didn't wiggle this time, so that's good. But yeah, better safe than sorry. I picked up uh, two contracts, one for a satellite around the moon and one for a satellite around Minmus, so that gives us some of our funding. We'll take care of those uh, next time. This time I want to launch these satellites and then finally rescue a Kerbal. So throttle up, SAS is on, ignition, and launch. Merlin engines don't fail me now. Alright, next stage. Ooh, something exploded. Uh, whatever exploded was alright. We still got both deckers here. Last time I didn't ignite them as soon as I separated, this time I did. I guess that's the difference. We don't really need all this Delta V, but I guess it'll help. Fairing. Except. Okay, we're getting into a sort of a lopsided orbit, but that's all right. Okay, let's see. I think we want a 12 hour orbit, and we'll put the four satellites there. So let's go for four hours first, I think, and then we'll figure it out from there. Or we'll just get to wherever this stage can get us to. Because we just lost communication anyway, which is alright, it's alright. Not a problem in this case. That's past the day already. Alright, fine. Fine, fine. It's definitely not good to have them in too high an orbit. I think we'll have the bottom satellite do a lot of the work. Let's see. So, decouple. Okay, for now... I'll keep it there, I think. Let me see about the communication. We'll do more retroing. If okay, I do think that we'll still have communication. Okay, continue retro. Um, but we should probably pitch down to prevent the periapsis from going out of whack. We'll have them three hours apart, so I'm gonna have the period be nine hours, and then one at a time they'll boost themselves up so that they get 12 hour orbits. It'll be lopsided orbit, but it'll still be fine, I think. Uh, uh, okay, fine. That's the same thing. Okay. So we're going to go up to Apoapsis. And that's 14,000 kilometers. The combined abilities of these helical antennas is 24,000, so it should be okay. Okay, top one off. Uh, top one, top one. Okay. Ah. Uh, too far. Retrograde a bit. Got plenty of Delta V here. I could have used a much smaller rocket and much smaller probes. Mm -hmm. Okay, there we go. One day to the hundredth of a second. Okay, other way around, please. These don't have any experiments on them. 
Okay, I don't want any notifications about this one. I will rename it Quadsat Probe, Quadsat A. And it's a relay. Okay, next. Okay, well that's 12 hours. All right, back around. Each time we decouple, our periapsis gets lower. <laughs> Gotta watch out for that. Next one, decouple. And go. Okay. All right. And here it got a real kick. It's uh, periapsis is now less than 82 kilometers. So prograde. And we want a little bit of a boost here, making sure it's back up to nine hours. Well, we'll see how this whole constellation works out for us. Uh, fine, I'll take it. Nothing deserves to be that perfect. Okay. Relay. All right. So this is done. We will execute sun up again. And yep. Let's try and rescue that Kerbal again. Okay, so here we go with the good old Matlas 3. I time warped to morning. And I haven't made any other changes, so we'll see. Uh, throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition, and launch. So two Merlins and then the Decker. Simple, relatively cheap compared to the other options. Okay, well, don't want it to overheat any more than that. All right. Let's let all that stuff die down for a sec. All right, separation. We have a good decker. And probably more Delta V than we need as it is. I'll have to watch out for electric charge. These are the only ones that we have. We kept the service module to a minimum on this, right? We've got the Oscar B and two Ant engines and that's it. Everything else is up here. It's just uh, ahead of us, so it's got to be annoying to boost up and wait, but I guess we'll have to. What we really want to do is keep track of communications as we go around the planet, make sure we don't have gaps now. Speaking of which, uh, we should extend the antennae, huh? They are now out. Okay, we'll uh, go with that. It's probably pretty extreme as it is. We are recharging. We'll still use this stage to help bring us back down again. I mean, our orbit back down. Okay, so keeping an eye on comms. We should pro probably put another four in uh, complementary orbit. The fact that we're in a high orbit also skews the results a bit. I don't know if it has a range long enough to go straight to one of the quad sets. They're pretty high up and it's got four communitrons so that's if they combine normally that's 8,000 altogether. We're still getting the mite data from our polar orbit set. Oh, we lost signal. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we regained it. At least that was quick. Okay, we need to go orbit retrograde here. We lost signal here, too. We'll probably need some more powerful antenna. I could have put a antenna on the service module, a high gain one. I decided not to because of the expense and because we won't be recovering it. 
We have found Bilson Kerman. He is still alive. That's good. Oh! Shoot. I forgot we were gonna switch to the ant engines. Oh, sorry, Bilson. Miss. Misestimated that. Oh, 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 oh. Towards the target, please. Communication is tenuous. Let me just double check that situation. Uh, it'll be fine, maybe? For a little bit, anyway. Okay, that should be good enough for Bilson. Okay, EVA, please. Bilson is a pilot. Good times. Okay, board. All right. Okay, Bilson is in. And let us see about the orbiting. I'm not going to be too picky. We'll try and get close, but anywhere around will do. Oh, we're in the atmosphere. Why did he always put it in the atmosphere? Yeah, okay, I, I remember now. He was in the atmosphere, yes. Good job, Bilson. I don't even remember the surface location that we retroed on the previous attempt. We definitely went too far. Let's try around here-ish. Say 121. And 30 kilometers. Okay. Alright. Normal. Trunk separation. Antennas in. Wilson's having a ball in there. Okay, we have re-entry heating. We are currently over here-ish. Just really don't want to land in that lake. Eh, we'll probably end up in that lake. So more than 120-something degrees east. Less than whatever we did last time, which I think was like 160-something. Still going. Takes a while for it to slow down, that's for sure. But not long enough that we would clear this water. Okay, arming parachute. I am wondering whether this will float. I think we should test it. I want to see. It really comes down to the buoyancy number, right? Whatever it was set to. Was it set to float or not? It seems like it floats, so we don't have to be too panicky about that. So we've done our first docking, uh, we've got the Agena stage ready to go, we've got some extra commsats, and we've got an extra pilot. So it's been sort of a variety episode, but hopefully next time we'll have a little bit more focus, we'll see. With that I'll say thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.